Pimax sent me a crystal light to review. Let's check it out. Real quick, for those of you who already own a VR headset, an Index, a Reverb, or a Quest, and you're looking into getting a Pimax Crystal Light, Pimax has been running a PC VR upgrade event since July 7th, and it's going to continue until the end of the year. All you do is go to their PC VR upgrade program page, fill out the form, and provide proof of purchase of your headset, and you can get anywhere from $40 to $100 off of a Crystal Light. In addition to that, at the bottom where it says, where did you hear about this event? If you click the drop down menu and select YouTubers and then type in Bogey Dope, you'll also receive one free Pimax accessory. So definitely check it out. And for those of you who are new to VR and you wanna purchase a Pimax headset, make sure to use the discount code Bogey Dope to get 3% off your purchase. Now first, before we get into this, I wanna make sure you know that Pimax is simply letting me borrow this headset. I will have to send this back after the review and I am not getting paid for this review. They specifically asked me to provide an honest, unbiased review. So the following is my personal thoughts and feelings and my personal experience with this thing. The Pimax Crystal Light has a resolution of 2880 by 2880 per eye, offering an ultra clear 17 million pixel display. The lenses are glass aspheric lenses and they provide a wide sweet spot and reduced stray light. It's easy to set up, fairly plug and play, just a USB 3.0, a display port cable, and a power supply. It has variable refresh rates, 72 hertz, 90 hertz, and 120 hertz for adaptable setups. And of course, the display port cable ensures uncompressed visuals and low visual latency. It has built-in tracking, built-in audio, and a built-in microphone. So there's no need for base stations or lighthouses or anything like that. All the tracking is done internally using your PC's CPU. A little bit more on that later. The Crystal Light also has a horizontal field of view of 115 degrees and a vertical field of view of 105 degrees. Currently, the Crystal Light is going for $858 US and they have different payment options as well. Here are the minimum requirements for the Crystal Light the recommended requirements. You'll notice my PC specs are in the recommended level. And of course, here are the best experience requirements. Setting up the Crystal Light is fairly plug and play. You install Pimax Play on your PC, click on Guidance, and follow the on-screen instructions to get your headset set up and your controllers paired. Next, you'll set up a virtual play space so that you can play room scale games. You'll also want to go into device settings and make sure that your firmware is up to date. I left every other setting default. You can also create setting profiles for different games. I chose to just leave this alone and use the default for everything. Once I was done with that, I launched DCS and it worked right away. Now let's go over the pros and cons. Now first I want to make sure that I set expectations correctly on this review so you know where I'm coming from. The only VR headsets that I've ever experienced are the Oculus Rift CV1 and the Oculus Quest 2. So that's where I'm coming from. The first thing that stood out to me the greatest is the clarity. This thing is perfectly named the Crystal Light because it is crystal clear. The visuals are amazing, colors are fantastic, the contrast is great, there is absolutely zero screen door effect. At least I'm unable to perceive any screen door effect if there is one. God rays are a thing of the past, and I love that this thing doesn't need any lighthouses or camera sensors taking up extra USB ports on my computer. Another huge plus to the Crystal Light, there is no time limit to gameplay. With other headsets, they eventually die even though they're plugged into a USB port receiving power to their battery supply, they have no separate power supply, and so they die after a certain number of hours. It's usually a pretty fairly high number of hours so you don't ever get there, but the problem is, is with other headsets, those batteries eventually aren't going to charge as well anymore or hold a charge at all. With the Crystal Light, this isn't a problem because it has an actual power supply that you plug into the wall and into the cable. This keeps the Pimax Crystal Light powered indefinitely. As long as you can play, it has power. I love that it's compatible with Steam right away, and it was pretty much plug and play with DCS for me. The controls were very intuitive, very similar to any other hand controller I've used, and the battery life on these controllers is great. I've been playing with this thing for over a month and a half, almost two months. After two months of use, I'm about 50% battery life left on my controllers. Because of the rubber seal around your nose and the cushions around the sides of your face, very little light leaks in, which gives you a really bright and good contrast image. 
Now, I did like that in other headsets, I could actually look down and because there was nothing blocking my view, I could actually see between the headset and my nose to see my keyboard from outside without having to take my headset off. So with the crystal light, I have to take my headset off or at least pull it away from my face enough to see my keyboard and then put it back on if I need to look at my keyboard. I also found that the cable length was long enough that I could have it plugged into my PC and still have a room scale experience walking around my room and having plenty of cable length to get me around. On to the cons. Compared to other headsets, which boast about 500-ish grams, Pimax advertises their headset at 815 grams. However, mine weighed in at around 872 grams. So it's fairly heavy, but not so heavy that it hurts your neck or causes any problems, but it is heavier and bulkier than some others out there. It's also very wide. Most headsets are as wide as your head, sometimes slightly wider, but this thing measures in at 10 and a quarter inches in width at its widest point. So it's fairly large on your face. Now I'm fairly certain this is because the different models of Pimax's headsets all use, at least it looks like they use the same frame. And instead of having to design different frames for different size FOVs, they just use the same frame and just depending on whether you get the light or the Pro or uh, the Super or whatever, you get a larger screen inside the frame. Which makes a lot of sense when it comes to manufacturing, makes things a lot easier. So I understand it, but it is very wide considering the FOV. Another thing I noted is you have to have lighting in your room. You cannot turn the lights off and play in the dark. You have to have lighting in your room for the camera sensors to be able to track your walls and the things around your room in order to give you head tracking. You turn the lights off and that all but disappears and you start having really bad head tracking. So you have to have good lighting. The sidebars do not hug your head. This means that the headset sometimes wobbles left and right. It doesn't have a very good grip on the sides of my head. I wish it was more snug on my head. The built-in sound is lacking, in my opinion. It's very, very quiet, which would be expected for a built-in speaker. It's very small, but I had to note it because if you're planning on using the headset without any headphones, the audio is very lacking, in my opinion. It's very quiet and very small sound. So for people like me who care about that sort of thing, uh, you're definitely going to want to have some headphones on with it. Now, I know this, this is probably the reason that those sidebars are so wide to allow you to put headphones underneath, but my Razer Krakens won't fit underneath without bending, so I have to put them on the outside and bend them all the way out to get them onto my head properly. Again, that's just my personal use case with my personal hardware. I'm sure other people don't have that problem and they probably fit fine within there, but I would still rather have the headset itself grip my head all the way around more snugly than just the front and back. With it just gripping front and back just creates an X axis and the thing just kind of wobbles. So I wish the sidebars were snug up against the sides of my head and I could put my headphones around that. Now, although the built-in sound is lacking, the microphone's okay. not. The built-in microphone is not that bad. It actually sounds pretty decent. Testing, 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 testing. Yeah, it's fairly clear, plenty clear. That sounds really good. I do have to mention that Pimax does offer an upgrade to the internal sound. You can buy the Demus earphones on the Pimax store and they cost $100 US. These are 40 millimeter headphone driver units and apparently they're a significant upgrade for the built-in speakers. Unfortunately, Pimax did not send me this upgrade so I can't really tell you what they sound like or if they really are that good. Uh, I'm not sure, but there is an upgrade to the built-in sound. Although I feel that a product that costs this much should include the earphones in the box as an option, but that's my own personal opinion. Now my biggest problem with the Crystal Light since I've received it has been the tracking. And this might be specific to me, I'm not sure. I've gone back and forth with Pimax uh, for the last two months on this, and I still haven't get, gotten really a clear answer on this. So I'm just gonna report to you my findings, what I've experienced, and what I've been told by Pimax. As soon as I received the Crystal Light, I installed Pimax Play, got it plugged in, configured, controllers paired, and launched into DCS. I was able to fly for about 15 minutes until all of a sudden, I was no longer able to track my head properly. When this happens, I turn my head left, but the image does not follow my head until a second later. I turn my head right, the image takes about a second to respond. This is very jarring and extremely disorienting. If I stick with it for about 30 seconds to 60 seconds, it eventually catches up with me, and then I'm back to normal, good to go. In my two months of experience with this problem, it is random. I don't know when it will happen, and it happens on 
on all games. DCS, Beat Saber, Arizona Sunshine, any VR game, it happens. In fact, it even happens in the Pimax menu. When I'm idling, nothing's playing yet, I'll be in the menu and this starts to happen. This makes whatever game I'm playing absolutely unplayable for 30 to 60 seconds. Sometimes I'd play for an hour and a half and it wouldn't happen and then it would happen at like an hour and 40 minutes in. Sometimes I couldn't get 30 seconds into the menu of just initially booting up and it started happening. Sometimes I'd be good through the menu, I'd start a game and it would start five minutes into the game. There was no rhyme or reason, didn't seem to match, you know, any position I was in the room, any lighting. It didn't seem to affect my hardware. CPU, RAM, or GPU usage was the same before, during, and after. There just was no rhyme or reason. I could not figure this out. So I reported this, reported my findings, sent a picture of my room, and sent logs to Pimax. They found nothing wrong with my room, my walls, or anything like that. They took my logs, and uh, a little bit later, I was given a custom SLAM file. Now, SLAM is Pimax's proprietary uh, algorithm stands for simultaneous localization and mapping, and it's the core of their tracking software. What they sent me were four SLAM library files, one DLL and a couple library files. All I did was replace the same files inside the installation folder with these new ones, and all of my tracking problems went away. And since then, I haven't had any problems since having these new files in place. And the support team there has provided me a few different types of SLAM files to test out and troubleshoot. So far, the one that they gave me initially is the only one that has worked. The others have resulted in the exact same behavior, if not worse. Now, I was hoping this was something that I did something wrong with my PC, something that I did wrong during my configuration, or something, something that I did, something unique to me, uh, which is why I was holding off on making this video until I fully understood the problem and the fix. And unfortunately, I still don't have a clear answer from Pimax as to what has caused this, nor do I have an answer as to what specifically in these new library files fixes it either. So because of that, I have to add this to the review just in case someone out there has this problem or just in case someone decides to go ahead and buy a Pimax and ends up with the same problem. The current solution is to reach out to Pimax support send them a log and they will send you a custom slam file. Now, although I don't have a real clear answer from Pimax as to what has caused this or what in those files that I was given actually fixes it, they did give me three possible reasons why this might be happening. The first was processing overload, which I know without a doubt is not the problem as this was happening on the menu when the CPU was barely being ran. And every time this happened, I always had my hardware monitor running and everything was the same before, during, and after the latency event. The second was sensor synchronization jitter, mismatches between the camera and the IMU, which is the inertial measurement unit. Camera runs from 30 to 90 hertz, and the IMU's 1000 hertz. Third could be IO bottlenecks, input output bottlenecks. But unfortunately, they couldn't tell me which of those was my problem, nor could they tell me if it was something I was doing or what it was in the files they gave me that fixed it. So that's the best I can give you guys. I'm hopeful that in the future, this will be integrated into a future version of Pimax Play and the headset firmware. But as of now, that is the current fix. Now, although I did have all these problems with the inside out tracking with the cameras on the headset, I do have to mention that Pimax does offer an upgrade through their Lighthouse faceplate. This faceplate costs $200 US and it enables compatibility with Steam VR tracking systems through the lighthouses. And according to Pimax, this is a much more accurate tracking solution. Now, unfortunately, they did not send me this upgrade package either, nor do I even own any lighthouses, so I wouldn't be able to test it out anyway. So I can't really speak to it, uh, whether or not it's um, better or if it's as good or better than other headsets, but I will take their word for it. All in all, it's a decent headset. It has its pros, it has its cons. It's big, it's bulky, it doesn't have much in the Play Store. The built-in audio isn't the best, but the image is crystal clear. You have a wider field of view than most headsets out there. It easily connects to the entire Steam VR store, and at 2880 by 2880 per eye, you have a much higher resolution than some of the competitors out there. So hopefully this was helpful, and I'll see ya.